The FIRE movement is changing the way people think about money. Spend less, save more. Retire in 10 years or less? It may sound crazy to some, especially if you're in your 20s, but let's talk about it because it may be more possible than you think. Welcome back. My name is Steven Spicer and it's my goal to help you invest smarter and build a stable lifetime income. Okay, so this FIRE movement has definitely been growing in popularity, especially as those who have done it now have ever growing platforms where they can share their awesome stories. Or for those who hated it and took an alternative path, if you dig enough, you'll find some of both. The movement in general seeks to disrupt some of the industry norms that society has adopted for retirement. And in general, that's something that I can get behind. So let's explore the FIRE movement and some of the principles that can be learned from it. And feel free to check the detailed timestamps in the description if you'd rather just jump around. All right, so our first takeaway from the FIRE movement is to question the social norm of retiring at age 65. Question retirement. I've worked with hundreds of clients over the years, and when asked when they'd like to retire, the vast majority just shrug and say, 65? But why, why is that? Well, it's not entirely arbitrary. If you look back to 1935, when President Franklin Roosevelt signed Social Security into law, the age to receive full Social Security benefits was age 65. And those benefits were supposed to take care of you for the rest of your life, retire at 65. But here's where it gets a bit funny and why today this same logic doesn't apply. Back in 1935, when the age of 65 for full benefits was originally declared, the average male only lived to age 60. The average female, 64. So yeah, this target retirement age came from a number set years after the average American was already dead. Social Security wasn't put in place so that people could retire early and enjoy their last decade or so in life, as it may seem today. As life expectancy has increased approximately 16 years since then, our Social Security benefits have only budged a couple of years to age 67. This has two implications. One being that as Social Security increased the age for when full benefits could be received, many Americans still associate their retirement age with that original idea. And more importantly, over time, people have started to see themselves retiring well before they think they'll die, something that was not nearly as prominent in history and something that should be accompanied with increased savings and planning in order to pull off. Now, frankly, for many of the clients we work with, Social Security isn't even much of a consideration as to when they can retire, and it may not be for you either. Based on the government's own projections from the 2019 annual report, unless something changes, some of the funds that currently help support Social Security will be depleted by 2034, causing a significant decrease in the total benefits that could be paid out. On top of that is the sheer fact that the benefits being paid out are kind of small potatoes compared to what most people are used to living on, or at least would like to live on in their retirement. So yeah, I'm on the same page with a lot of you. Social security is not something that I'm going to expect to support me. It'll be a nice bonus, but I'm definitely not gonna rely on it to pay my bills. Let's consider this retirement age question given another random government set restriction. The IRS allows for penalty-free withdrawals from retirement accounts starting at age 59 and a half. So in reality, this could be a more useful target for many to retire at. But doesn't this too seem sort of arbitrary? I mean, 59 and a half, really? And is retiring really the goal anyway? I mean, don't you just wanna do things that ultimately make you happy? Things that you could potentially do for the rest of your life? Maybe even things that could also potentially make you money? More on that later. Now, our second FIRE takeaway is to be intentional about your retirement goals. For those of you who aren't familiar, FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. So how do you get to that point? Well, no differently than anybody else would. You save up enough money so that you can live off your investments, a principle that nearly everyone is, or at least should be, abiding by. I mean, that's probably why you invest into a retirement account in the first place, right? Unfortunately, less than half of Americans have even tried to figure out their retirement needs. And yes, I agree, that's absolutely mind-blowing. Most Americans are just going through life assuming they will retire at age 65 or somewhere in that ballpark and don't even know if they're on track to have enough money to do so. Worse yet, I'd venture to guess that some do retire still unsure if it's enough. 
Though there's no surefire way to calculate how much you need to accumulate in order to not work again for the rest of your life, the 4% rule is what the majority of the FIRE community, and frankly, a lot of others, use. They look back on historical data to see what would have worked in the past and rely on that to predict forever into the future. Sure, though my approach may be a little different, I'm all for figuring out a way to build a stable lifetime income that suits what you're comfortable with and willing to do. And the cool part is that when you know how to calculate what you need to do to hit your retirement goals, you can play with the numbers. If you need to save $300 a month to retire at 65, you may be curious, how much sooner could you retire if you found a way to save $500 a month instead? Why stop there? What would it do for you if you could put away $1,000 a month? You get the idea. It's not uncommon for some people in the FIRE community, after getting lost in the excitement of this exercise, to be saving as much as 75% of their income, only living on 25%. Obviously, for most of them, this means making some serious lifestyle changes. So why does anyone wanna do this? Well, believe it or not, not everybody loves working. A 2013 Gallup poll found that only 30% of US workers are engaged in what they do at work. Yep, that means the remaining 70% they're just there because it pays the bills. Which leads me to our third big takeaway from the FIRE movement. Give yourself options. This not wanting to work for someone mentality doesn't just apply to those who are lazy and wouldn't be interested in anything more than a comfy couch, Netflix, uh, maybe some ice cream. Mark Cuban, though unaware of the snazzy name and acronym, was fire in before it was cool. After watching his dad work for an employer and have little control over his time, he swore that he wouldn't let that become his reality. All Mark wanted to do was save enough money to live like a college student. He thought that if he got to $250,000, that he could live off the 10% interest he expected his investments to earn each year. Now for him at the time, $25,000 seemed like more than enough to live on. He admittedly notes that his expectations wouldn't be quite so high today for that expected investment performance. As for other reasons why someone may want to give up some of life's greatest luxuries in exchange for being financially free, sense of accomplishment comes to mind. Doing things that are tough and seeing them through when you know the outcome is a positive one is one of the most rewarding feelings. And if you're doing that tough thing with other people, like your spouse, who is completely on board, I think has the ability to strengthen the relationship. At the same time, if they aren't 100% on board, it might be wise to find a compromise. And for those of you single folks worried about finding a partner that's on the same page financially as you are, well, lucky for you, as of 2020, there are now dating sites and blogs that are dedicated to helping you meet other firers just as passionate about retiring early as you are. Also, spending less money forces you to prioritize things that truly matter in life. Does driving a nice car make you happier? Does having a big home make you happier? Does watching television or a certain show make you happier? For some people, the answer to one or more of those questions may be yes, and that's totally fine. But for others, the thought of being financially free makes them even happier. When you really think through the things you're spending money on each month, you may find that some of them don't add any real value, that you could eliminate them without much issue, especially if it means having more financial security and freedom, which for the majority of Americans is a top stressor. There is certainly a balance that needs to be struck where you can work towards the life you dream about for your future while also still enjoying the life you live today. The alternative option to cutting expenses is to raise your income. This could mean picking up another part-time job, or it could mean starting a few side hustles or passion projects. Many firers will try to turn some of their skills into forms of income. That may mean dusting off the camera and offering cheap services for senior pictures, at least until you can start to raise your prices with experience. Another option may be to tutor kids in a subject in which you feel confident. Or maybe you're willing to do yard work for some of your neighbors. Or maybe you have a spare bedroom you'd be willing to rent out if it means retiring that much earlier. And for a lot of people really committed to this ideal, they're regularly working on both sides, raising their income and decreasing their expenses. Getting to a point where you can save 50 to 75% of your income is absolutely possible for many, but it'll probably take some of that work on both ends. For some of you, this extreme lifestyle may seem daunting, perhaps not even worth it. Well, there are a lot of people involved in the FIRE movement who feel the same way. That's why different variations of FIRE have evolved. And that's our fourth takeaway, that it's not all or nothing. 
The whole movement has evolved over the years. There's fat fire, where you live a traditional lifestyle, but still manage to save more than the average investor who saves 10 to 15% of their income. There's lean fire, which takes the exact opposite approach and lives an extremely minimalist lifestyle. There's barista fire, which refers to an approach where people get to a point where they can quit their nine to five jobs and cut back to working part-time. There's coast fire, which applies to those who take a part-time job, but are in a position where they wouldn't need to. Finally, there's Spicer fire, and that's where you hit the like button on this video. I'm sure there are many others out there as well. Anybody looking to take this journey should create their own version of fire, one that suits their lifestyle, but also excites them to take action toward their long-term goals of being financially independent. Because remember, the point of the FIRE movement isn't really to get to a point where you stop working. I mean, for many people, if they were retired in their 30s, they wouldn't even know what to do with their time. The point of the FIRE movement is to give people the opportunity to choose their future, to have financial freedom, something that everyone should seek to attain as soon as possible. Though Mark Cuban's career didn't follow the path that he anticipated, it wasn't until he found something he truly loved that he built his first successful company, which he later sold for about $6 million. And that's the beauty of having options. You'll be in a better position to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. Most people won't be able to get there quickly without making sacrifices along the way. This mindset really forces you to evaluate how you allocate your money and is the basis for our fifth big takeaway, that you are trading your time and freedom for your stuff or anything you choose to spend your money on. Next time you go to make a non-essential purchase, look at what you're about to spend your money on and ask yourself how much value it will add to your life. Make it real. Think of how much time you would have to spend working in order to pay for that thing. Are you willing to spend two months working just so that you can drive a nicer car to that job every day? What about an extra three weeks of work just to go on an extravagant one week vacation? With most purchases you make, you are trading your extremely valuable and limited time for stuff. And remember, the future value of that money makes your purchase today even more costly, meaning the $10,000 extra you spent on that car may mean an extra year of working 30 years from now because of the opportunity cost of your decision. Though I believe the FIRE movement has its flaws, having intentionality with your finances is a great start and something that you should take seriously. So what about you? When are you gonna be truly financially free or are you already? I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and, and helping however I can. I wish you all the best. Take care.